Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And I've pulled a bunch of stuff here onto the table in front of me. It's that time of the week where I get to show you a bunch of the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves since last week. Let's check them out. So we're going to start with a limited edition Kershaw. This is a new version of the Knockout. We're priced at about 130 bucks, and obviously the first thing you see is we've got a carbon fiber handle construction right here, which has a really cool look, and it pairs very nicely with the stone-washed blade. Or it's actually, it's not a stone-wash, this is what they call their working finish, which is a really heavy stone-washed finish. And you get kind of a matte texture, or a matte vibe to it, as opposed to the shinier standard uh, stone-wash that comes across. And it looks really good uh, against the carbon fiber. You got a nice dichotomy of kind of like high class and, and more rugged between the two. And even better than that, M390 steel on this blade. So you're gonna be able to get a lot of work done. Cause you got about three and a quarter inches of blade and plenty of belly to kind of increase the amount of edge you've got. Just a really solid blade and a really solid steel behind it. Back to the handle, as I mentioned, carbon fiber. And then flipping it over, you see more carbon fiber there because of course we've got Kershaw's subframe lock on this knife. That allows them to get a big contact patch between the lock bar and the steel of the blade, just like a, a conventional frame lock, but they're able to keep the weight down, especially in this case because they've used carbon fiber, because the only metal on the back there is the, uh, the lock bar itself. So in addition to being a pretty rugged folder overall, it's also gonna be pretty easy to carry. Because like I said, you've got a lot of capability with that amount of blade edge and that, uh, that steel with that type of lock but it's nice and slim too. And thanks to that carbon fiber construction, it's gonna be really lightweight as well. So when you go to pocket it, it's gonna slide in and fit very nice and flat and carry very easily, especially uh, doubly so because we've got a deep carry pocket clip as well. It goes on either side too, left or right hand carry. So it's a really solid EDC. Thanks to that uh, speed safe assisted opening action that you just saw me use, the action's gonna be nice and consistent thanks to that torsion bar that flings the blade out once you start moving it a little bit manually. But again, limited edition, so these aren't gonna last forever. And they're only 130 bucks, made in the USA, really good specs. So if you want one, you're gonna wanna jump on it now. All right, next up we've got another Kershaw. Not a limited edition though, but it is a, an update or a new version of a previously existing model. This is a new version of the Link. We've got aluminum handle scales here and a 20 CV blade, CPM 20 CV. Now you could previously get this knife with aluminum handle scales and an M390 blade. And 20 CV is kind of the, uh, is actually sort of the American equivalent or the American analog to M390, you know, just made by different companies. And we've got a stonewashed finish on this version with 20 CV. And that actually gives us a good opportunity to kind of compare that stone wash to the working finish on the knockout that we just looked at. So in addition to that slight switch in steel, um, which again is made in America, M390 is an imported steel. So because of that change, this entire knife right here is made in, the, made in America, including the blade steel itself. The other area where they've changed things up is the uh, previous aluminum version was kind of flat, um, just a, a simple flat piece of aluminum. Well, they've done some more milling on this particular one to give it a little bit more character. Obviously, we, you can see we've got some strong lines going on that break up the shape a little bit. They also give you a little bit more traction as well uh, when you're actually gripping the knife. And it's got this cool green color too, which just looks great. The other change they've made, they've gone to a, uh, another deep carry pocket clip, just like that knockout. Again, reversible for both sides. And this is a liner locking folder like before and a speed safe assisted opening knife. Pretty cool, and the price on this is actually a really good deal, especially considering you're getting 20 CV aluminum made in America. It's just an $83 knife right now. I've got one more uh, speed safe assisted opening Kershaw today. This is the Gravel, and this is an affordable knife. Pretty good deal at about 32 bucks. We've got about two and a half inches of blade with their black wash finish and HCR 13 MOV steel. So it's sort of, it's an entry level workhorse. Certainly does a pretty good job, but it's not going to hold an edge as long as the, uh, the American 20 CV or the M390 as the, the previous two knives, but it also costs a lot less, so there you go. Stainless steel handles, they also have that black wash finish, and we've got a frame lock on board, as well as another deep carry pocket clip. Pocket clip. They're really hitting that uh, nicely on both of these models here, on all of these Kershaw models, I should say. And, like I said, speed safe, flipper, nice quick action on a budget, just 32 bucks for the Kershaw Gravel. All right, next up, another affordable knife in the uh, Cold Steel Mini Tough Light. And just remember, like, 
Got some fairly affordable stuff here up front, so just remember that later. Got some really expensive stuff to show you later. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, the Mini Tough Light though comes in at about 30 bucks in a few different handle colors. As you can see, I've got the red one here, but we've also got blue, OD, green, and black, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and about a two inch uh, Warncliffe blade with a 4034 stainless steel. Now, despite that being a very, seeming like a uh, very small knife, because of the handle construction, uh, first of all, you've got a nice uh, sort of subtle orange peel texture on the Crayx, or sorry, Grivex handle material, as well as a, a nice broad shallow divot here on the side. And then combined with the, uh, the large finger choil here on the front of the blade, you can darn near get a full four finger grip on this knife. I myself wear about a size large work glove and I can get about a three and a half finger grip, um, almost a four finger grip, honestly. But you can get a lot of power and a lot of control over that shorter blade. As far as geometry, we've got a hollow grind and then nice acute tip. And unlike the uh, the larger tough or yeah the larger tough light, which is still a pretty small knife, it's a little bit of a has a little bit longer blade and the edge um, is perfectly parallel to the handle. Because this is shorter, if they'd stayed perfectly parallel with the edge, it would be harder to use the tip. So they've actually it's still a straight line, but they've kicked it up just a little bit to bring the tip up. So you're going to be able to do scoring stuff very nicely opening packages, boxes day to day, but it's a really solid little box cutter, uh, any type of scoring work, as I said, uh, opening packages day to day. And I actually misspoke a second ago, the blade steel here is actually OS 8. So you get a really good amount of, of edge retention for an entry, an entry level knife, uh, very easy to maintain, nice stainless qualities. And if the blade were to ever come loose, you've got that finger choil there, which is gonna keep the, uh, would keep it from closing further on your finger, but that's not actually very likely to happen in my opinion because you've got Cold Steel's triad lock right here, which definitely one of the stronger locking mechanisms on the market. And to get that all on a, a smaller budget oriented knife like this for about 30 bucks, I think is a really good deal. and makes this a really solid contender for your everyday carry utility type of needs. All right, since we're on the subject of small utility things, uh, we've got a new multi-tool from Gerber. This is the Armbar series. And we've got two versions. This is the cork, but we've also got the drive, and that one comes with a, a full-size uh, screwdriver bit holder. But the cork comes with a bottle opener. Or sorry, a, uh, a corkscrew, I should say, which technically that's a bottle opener, but you know what I mean. But unlike some uh, multi-tools, like let's say a Swiss Army knife that just has the corkscrew, we've also got the secondary arm here, which is gonna let you put more leverage on the bottle so that you can open it uh, in a little more civilized fashion instead of just you know, having to yank on the, uh, the cork with all your might. Um, nice little addition there, but in, uh, separate from that, of course it is a multi-tool, so we've got more functionality baked in. On the back side here, we've got a, uh, a can opener, as you can see, as well as a nice pair of scissors. And it's actually a pretty sizable uh, pair. It's bigger than most of the uh, pliers-based multi-tools out there, the, uh, the fold-out scissors that those have. Really nice set of shears on this with a really uh, nice strong torsion bar spring to keep it going. Not a uh, not just a little flat spring, it's actually, as you can see, a, uh, a small rod there. So that's that should hold up pretty nicely and give you a good amount of pressure, good amount of spring tension. Of course, we've got a blade here on the side and technically it's one hand opening. Um, I've personally found because it's a little bit flatter than it is tall, it's a little awkward to open one handed. It kind of wants to roll in my hand just a little bit. Um, it's just a minor thing, it's still pretty usable. Uh, steel on it is nothing special. This is a, a entry-level Chinese stainless steel, um, but it's going to get you through in a pinch. Um, for those of us out there, most people watching this probably carry a knife with a lot better steel to start with. Uh, this uh, right here on the Gerber is a good backup. Also make a good gift item for folks out there who may not be knife people. At least they'll have an edge with them. Uh, you can kind of sneak that knife gift in with the rest of the multi-tool. But stonewashed finish, uh, sheep's foot profile, nice little EDC, and it comes with a liner lock too to keep it nice and secure. Now, I've said it before, we all know any good multi-tool isn't worth its salt unless it has a bottle opener, and this one does have a bottle opener as well, in fact. You can see here on the end, we've actually got a small plate, and that's used for hammering. Um, not anything heavy duty, of course, but you could tap and, and bang on some things if you need to. But pop that up, and there's our bottle opener right there. So pretty cool, I know they're, these are gonna be pretty popular, and price on these were about 34 bucks for these Gerber arm bars. All right, next up, we've got a few new things from Exotac to show you. Uh, I've got a new fire starter, of course. Exotac is very well known for their fire starters. We carry their, their ferro rods, their, uh, their Titan light lighter I'm a big fan of. We got that, as well as their fire sleeve, which of course is a uh, waterproof sleeve for your Bic lighter. But this is the NanoSpark 
made in the USA, just like the rest of their stuff coming in at about 23 bucks. The color here is orange, although we have a few different colors and like most of their stuff, this is anodized aluminum. And the way this guy works is we've got a small striker wheel here at the top or small flint striker that's gonna throw your sparks with a little twist of your thumb from the top right there. And that'll, you can use natural tinder of course, or the included tinder tabs that come right here in the package. And as a bonus, you can actually store some of these inside the body of the, of the uh, little striker itself, which is pretty cool. The flint on these is replaceable too if they ever wear out. And there's a nice little lanyard spot here so you can attach it to your gear nice and easily, but that's a pretty cool new item from Exotac. In addition to that, we've got another new item from them. This is called their Rip Spool, and this is not a fire starter, unlike most of their stuff. Price on these is about uh, 25 bucks, and this actually incorporates a lot of kind of maintenance gear that you might need, or emergency uh, repair gear that you might need in the outdoors. Basically, the biggest thing we see here and what the rest of the tool is centered around is a small roll of heavy duty duct tape, about two inches wide. Now this isn't Gorilla Tape. I know some uh, outdoorsmen really swear by that stuff and it is really good, uh, but it is a heavier duty repair duct tape and we've got over 50 inches right here on this small device. In addition to that, we've got 30 pound test line here on the end, which I've, uh, there's a bit of plastic over it at the moment to kind of keep it secure in the packaging. Uh, high strength synthetic, over 60 feet, as I, again, as I said, 30 pound test. And that's not enough. We've still got a couple more functions actually. You can unscrew this guy and on the inside, we've got a heavy duty needle buried right there. It's got a nice, strong, flattened out tip. The eye is going to be uh, a little bit on the larger side, so it's not going to be too hard to thread your, uh, your cordage through there in an emergency when you need to stitch something up. And since the point sticks right in the bottom of the uh, device right there, it's going to be real easy to carry it without stabbing yourself, which of course can always be a, a little bit of a worry. So take it back apart here real quick. The, um, the bottom of this also actually serves a secondary purpose. Uh, the, the needle, um, I do have the spec here. It's a number 16 sail needle, uh, which will give you an idea of the strength. And the bottom can actually be used as sort of an improvised thimble when you need to push it through something, let's say a heavier material. Um, you'll have no problems uh, using that in an emergency if you're gonna need to in a pinch. Now this is, is Exotac. They are the fire guys. And there is actually a little bit of a fire component here. Um, the lanyard here is actually made out of fire cord. So one of the internal strands, there's a one that's a red color as opposed to the, uh, the other uh, inner pieces. And that actually will burn like a candle from a spark and help you get your fire going a little bit quicker. All right, back to more affordable knives. We've got a new bird knife from Spyderco. This is the Harrier 2 coming in under 30 bucks. This is sort of the mid-sizer in their full-size folder lineup. Um, if you're comparing it to Spyderco's, it's gonna be somewhere in between a Delica and an Endura. Uh, I don't have an Indela here to hold it up right next to, but it might be a little bit uh, close to that. Uh, about 3.3 inches of steel, 8CR13 MOV, and a little bit over three inches of edge. Apart from that, it's like every great Spyderco or bird knife that you love. You've got FRN handles with two different directions of texturing, nice mid-mounted lockback with the David Boyd dent, four position pocket clip so you can carry it wherever you want, and the blade opens nice and easily thanks to the opening hole, the comet hole in this case. It's not the uh, perfectly, uh, it's not the Spyderco circle. You've got a little bit extra going on. But where this pulls ahead of the more premium Spyderco offerings that it's sort of based on, you've actually got a finger choil here um, as well to kind of span the distance around the pivot and get up closer behind the edge, get some more work done. But it's a really solid knife, a really solid size at just 30 bucks. Speaking of fuller size Spydercos, we've actually got the new version of the Pacific Salt. This is the Pacific Salt 2 from Spyderco. Price on this is uh, just over 100 bucks, I think 101.50 right now. And this of course being a salt series and made of H1 steel is designed to be completely rust proof in those uh, caustic environments, well not necessarily caustic, but in the, uh, the really wet environments out on the open ocean, that sort of thing. Uh, really solid knife that's not, you're not gonna have to worry nearly as much about maintenance about. About 3.8 inches of blade, as I said, H1 steel with a hollow grind, and a little bit of a drop to the uh, the end or to the tip here, which makes it a little bit more of a sheep's foot than the uh, the Endura, which this is kind of uh, this knife is based on. Where it differs from the Endura, it's a little bit thicker uh, because there's no liners or no inset liners like the uh, those other knives with this knife here. They do that for a couple reasons. One, it takes down the weight just a little bit. Um, to go without the liners, but then they needed to go a little thicker for the threading for the pocket clip. Uh, again, four position pocket clip, carry it in any direction you like, mid-mounted lockback with the boy dent, 
And the other advantage from that slightly thicker handle, you've got a slightly fuller grip as well. But there's a really good option for anyone who goes out on the water. Not too bad of a price either. Like I said, just about a hundred bucks for a knife that you're gonna be able to use and abuse without having to worry too much about cleaning aggressively. Still keep your knives clean, certainly, but you're not gonna have to stress about you know, parts rusting on you and the knife becoming unusable in the process. All right, next we've got a new SOG that I know folks have been waiting for. This is the Kiku XR. If I had to describe this knife in one word, it would be muscular because it's a shorter knife, but man, it just, it feels stocky. Like it's just packed with a ton of potential. Blade is CTS XHP, a little bit over three inches. Really cool compound grinds going on. We've got hollow here on the recurve, as well as flat on the, uh, the belly and the spine or uh, swedge of the knife. Kind of a harpoon tip as well. So this is a recurve, this is a compound ground recurve harpoon point. <laughs> a lot going on there. Um, handles, micarta, and they've got a really rugged texture going on, kind of, or a really rough and tumble kind of mountainy finish, which is pretty cool. But it still feels good in the hand. It doesn't create any hot spots really. Um, and again, just stocky, muscular, powerful little knife because it doesn't feel like a little knife, even though it's just a three inch blade. Like I said, you've got a lot of meat there and really good steel for that edge retention as well. Of course, the XR in the name Kiku XR stands for XR lock, which is what this is based around. Their take on the crossbar style lock, think of uh, you know, sort of like Benchmade's Axis lock, but this is their own spin on it. And you can open it in a few different ways. Of course, you can hold the lock bar back, flick it open and close, but you've also got the flipper tab as well as a broad thumb opening here at the front. Let's say open that no problem. And the action's even pretty good on the flipper as well. You know, the reason they were able to get good action on the flipper with this style of lock is they've actually incorporated the lock bar itself to be part of the detent. And you can see the evidence of that. Even when I hold it like so, if I just pull the lock bar back, you can see it kind of stages the blade up a little bit because of the ramped portion of the tang. It's already pushing that blade out just a little bit. It's not going to open it completely, obviously. You still got to give it a little flick but it's a really cool uh, spin on this genre of lock and a, a nice little improvement over some other designs. Deep carry pocket clip as well, although not super deep carry, we've got a little bit sticking out there at the back. I feel like I say that a lot with things, but that's okay. Um, it's true. And it is reversible for either side. And what's cool is it actually, instead of being screwed in from the outside, it actually nests inside the handle itself, which is pretty neat. So I'm really glad these are in. Um, I haven't been able to really play around with one of these too much so far, and they feel really good. Two versions of this, both come in at about 190 bucks. We've got this one here, as well as a version with a black micarta handles, and that version comes with a black Cerakoted blade. And as I said, both of them same price. All right now we've got a fixed blade from a different company, but oddly, the vibe is actually very similar to that SOG. But this is a knife from Fox in Italy, and this is the Bushman. It's a bigger knife, uh, coming in about 225 bucks. We've got six and a quarter inches of D2 steel. Blade stock is about 3 16 of an inch thick, so it's gonna be nice and durable. And black stone wash finish here on the upper portion, but then satin there near the edge, because this actually has two different planes of a flat grind. You can see at the top of the plunge line, the uh, grind line stops right up here. And then a new, it's ground flat, and then a slightly more acute flat, or a slightly steeper flat, starts right here where the, uh, the steel becomes bare again. It kind of lets them get away with similar to what you would see with a convex grind without actually having to go through the more complex uh, production manufacturing of a convex grind versus the flat grinds. Handles are micarta and they have a similar but not the same kind of style as that SOG. A little bit of, uh, of texturing or a little bit of ribbing almost going on, uh, but I think it feels really good. It's not so aggressive that it creates any kind of hot spots in your hand that you're gonna have to worry about too much. But despite the length, the balance on this knife is actually really good. It sits right about uh, just barely in front of the, the finger guard here. So it's a tiny bit blade heavy, but not too much that you're not so much that you're gonna find it unwieldy, but you can choke back on the handle a little bit and get a little more leverage if you wanna use this as a light chopper at the same time. Protruding pommel here at the back. It doesn't come to a sharp point though. It just kinda, it is a little bit rounded over. I think that's fine. It's still gonna be able to concentrate your force to a nice small point. And again, they, they call this the Bushman, so obviously they intend, intend it to be an outdoors knife. I think it would make a good, if you want to carry a bigger survival knife, this is certainly a nice option. Be a good tactical knife too, I think. Um, but it's more of an outdoorsy oriented thing, as you can tell probably from the sheath as well. What's cool about this is they made it very modular, and you can kind of set this up in a number of different ways. As you can see, it's made from black leather, and I've got the, the uh, straps kind of splayed out here. but set up uh, in the box to carry horizontally, or sorry, 
set up in the box to carry vertically on your belt. But you can see there's some screw heads here. You can actually take these straps off and reorient them. And you can, in fact, if you were so inclined, set them up one here, one here, and you can actually carry it horizontally as well, whether you're doing cross draw or scout carry. And what's nice about this, um, they went a step further. As you can see, we've got a retention strap to keep things in, and it's got a snap. It's actually got a snap on both sides, which means you don't have to worry about um, if you want to carry it a certain way that would put the, um, the strap close against your body, the, the normal snap, you can still use the secondary snap on the other side as well. But it's a pretty cool solution to offering a lot of different options for folks out there. You know, the sheath is often the hardest part and the sheath is the hardest thing to satisfy people with. So the fact that they were able to kind of cater to a bunch of different carry styles, but still have a nice classic looking leather sheath, I think is pretty darn cool. All right, next we've got another new knife from Fox. This is a Jens Anso design flipper. This is called the Ziggy. How cool of a, how fun of a name is that? Uh, right here, we've got a three and a quarter inch N690 blade, heavy black stonewash finish and carbon fiber handles. Again, kind of similar uh, execution to that SOG. We've got some really wide scallops, kind of a mountainy finish right here. Um, price on this is $195 or just under. Uh, and we've got other versions of this as well. Um, plain blade uh, or a plain, plainer satin finish. We've got some of the zero coat wood and those are a few, few dollars less. They still come in at about $190. Again, Fox, it's made in Italy, and I love the organic lines we've got going on here. We've got a really nice, uh, gentle flow going on, but it's still gonna, it still is going to work very well. Got a ball bearing pivot. Of course, this is a flipper. Pops open quite nicely. Single position pocket clip. This is right side tip up only, but the liner lock holds it in nice and secure, and it just kind of fits into my hand at least very nicely. Now, in addition to that, I've got another new Fox uh, folding knife that feels like an Anso design, but it actually isn't. Um, even though I think style-wise, it, it does kind of land close to some of the stuff he does. But this is called Delivery, again, from Fox Knives. Price on this is uh, 101 and change right now. Uh, two and three quarter inch blade, M390 steel with this kind of cool swooping sheep's foot profile. Flat ground in this case. Handles here, we've got carbon fiber, but we've also got uh, green micarta, zero coat wood, uh, maybe a couple other options as well. All priced very similarly um, at just over 100 or just under 100 bucks. Now the action on these are pretty good, but like uh, there was another uh, Fox slip joint we looked at recently, the action is a little bit different than you might expect from a slip joint. You still get a nice half stop and it still closes quite nicely, um, but it doesn't feel as springy, um, if, that's a, if that makes sense to you guys out there, as most other slip joints out there. There's less sort of pull, except right at the very end of the travel. It feels really locked down, really solid, and especially right there uh, in the open, open position, requires a fair bit of force to pop it from its open position, which is pretty appreciated. Also appreciated, comes with a black leather pocket slip, and there's something about this knife, at least in this handle material, that it sits in my hands really exceptionally well. It feels really comfortable. As soon as I held it, I was like, this knife wants to cut. Um, it's a really cool design, something a little bit different than most slip joints, but still nice and classy. Uh, really cool blade shape going on. That's the Fox Knives livery, not designed by Jens Anso. All right, now we're going to start getting into some of the more expensive stuff. Just remember, I showed you some really good affordable stuff here at the beginning. The first is from Alliance Designs. This is called the Chisel, designed by Jeremy Marsh. And we've got two versions here, both of them coming in at about 340 or right at 340 right now. Two versions, as I said, we've got the carbon fiber with anodized uh, titanium, anodized blue liners, nice heavier uh, liner lock on it. And you get to see some of that blue poking through uh, the front of the carbon fiber as well. But by far, my favorite version is this second one here. It's still got anodized blue liners, but it has a paper micarta handle scale on each side that looks really cool. But this is truly a knife that feels like a custom in production knife form, especially with these, this uh, micarta material here. It looks like ivory, in fact, uh, which is something you're not going to see pretty much on a production knife, certainly not something of this caliber. It has a nice warm look that looks, get, looks good against that blue, and we've got a really cool angular, not angular, really uh, stream, slim line shape going on. M390 blade. And despite the name chisel, this is a double hollow ground uh, blade. We don't have a, a chisel grind going on here. 
Uh, M390, like I said, I think I said anyway, three and a quarter inches of it. A little bit of a crown spine going on here. So it's going to be a nice and capable little cutter. It's not just a pretty face at all. Single position pocket clip. It's a right side tip down carry. Matches the uh, finish of the backspacer there. These are really special, I think, um, especially you don't really see handle combinations too much like this outside of the custom arena. And at 340 bucks, this is a great way to get your hands on that type of look. Now, it's not the only new Alliance this week. We've got another one also coming in at about the same price. We're at 330. This is a new Ray Laconico design called the OG Jasmine. Also, as I said, Alliance designs. This one has a fairly conventional look, but I think it's going to be a highly refined everyday carry. It doesn't need to be super out there, super crazy to be a really solid tool and for you to be able to really appreciate the refined details going on here. Titanium frame, and it does have a little bit of a contour. And we've got two versions here as well, one with three oval holes there. And we've also got another one with several smaller uh, circular holes going down it. Also, again, for the same price. Uh, titanium, I believe I said milled titanium pocket clip there, semi floating backspacer, and the blade steels RWL 34, which is a really nice touch. Um, ball bearings in the pivot, but it is not a flipper. This is a just a more conventional kind of thumb stud opener. If you don't want to spring for let's say a new Sabenza, this would be a great choice. It would definitely you definitely get a lot of that premium feel that you would get with a Chris Reeve. Again, it's got a more subtle presentation than the uh, the previous Alliance, but it's no less refined. You've got a drop point blade, like I said, RWL 34, nice high flat grind. You're going to be able to get a lot of that same class that you would in a Chris Reeve folder potentially. Um, although I'd still maybe, you know, it's maybe by my bias showing, but I'd still uh, put a Chris Reeve a, a little bit higher. They're hard to beat, but there's nothing at all wrong with this. Don't get me wrong. Uh, OG Jasmine from Alliance. All right, next up, we've got a, uh, like those Alliance, this is technically a, a mid-tier. It's not a full custom. It's kind of a mid-tech knife. This is the Bones by Jeff Park. Now, I know what you may be thinking, that this might be a CRKT, and that's not the case. Um, this is actually the mid-tech version of the Crossbones, which was designed by Jeff Park, although this one is just called the Bones, not the Crossbones here. It's got a titanium frame, or titanium scales, I should say, in a few different color options, but it's got the same milling pattern uh, as the uh, affordable production knife version does. Got a few steps along the edge, sunken area with a little bit of raised diamond texture there. And it's really cool the way that they, uh, the lines kind of follow the lines of the handle and give it the, uh, that bones name at the same time. The liner lock is inset, holds the blade open nicely. Uh, blade steel CPM 154 in this case, three and a half inches, got that upswept shape with a nice crown spine here for comfort as well. Great gentleman's knife, great executive knife. Uh, especially with the deep carry pocket clip and especially in some of the cooler colors we've got. Um, there's several, you can check them all out at the link below. Jeff Park Mid Tech Bones, 425 bucks. All right, you guys ready for the really expensive one? This guy right here, it's a new limited edition Shirogorov collaboration with Chris Reeve Knives. And the price on this, get ready for it, 2,500 bucks or just under right now. Remember, you can still get this for 30 if you want, um, but this is a truly one of a kind knife. And I say that not as hyperbole. This is the only one out there like this. They've done a, a few different collaborations uh, and released them all at the same time, but the graphics on each one are different. And that's the Chris Reeve part of this Shirogorov is the onlay in the top comes with their CGG, their computer generated graphics that uh, they do all the time on their Sabenzas, but you can get it here on this knife right here, right here. It's a lot of here's. But that pairing between Chris Reeve and Shirogorov, I think is, it's one of those matches made in heaven. Both of them are at the top of their game in terms of fit and finish and refinement of their knives. Uh, this particular model is called the Unihati. Comes with that CGG Chris Reeve graphic, uh, but underneath this is pure Shirogorov. We've got a Vanax 37 blade. Uh, almost four inches long. We're about 3.87, almost 3.9 inches. And it's got one of those blade shapes that instantly screams Shirogorov. And you know what I mean if you're familiar with their work. Nice spine treatment. We've got some jimping here and the edges of the jimping are actually crowned. Uh, creates a, a good bit of comfort and some cool visual details. This is a titanium frame lock flipper. Action is going to be quite good. I haven't even flipped it yet, but I'm, I'm betting you it's going to be awesome. I was right. Uh, titanium on the back, brown Alutex inlay, and the front scale is all brown Alutex with that CGG graphic from Chris Reeve on the top. 
really cool. And this is one of the reasons I really love my job because I would have never been able to hold one of these before if I didn't work here and get to play with the cool stuff. Um, taking very good care of it though. I'm not really playing with it if you get my drift. Um, Cause this is a $2,500 knife. I don't want to be messed. I don't want to mess it up and be responsible for it. Um, but maybe this is a good candidate for our layaway program if you're really thinking hard about it. But anyway, a lot of cool stuff this week. Uh, let us know what your favorite one was. Uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know what else you're looking forward to. And if you want to get your hands on any of these cool knives, we're going to leave links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson signing off. See you next week. For real this time. Sure. Yeah. It's going in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that nonsense. That was good. That works. <laughs> Hmm, okay, I'm gonna need some beans after this.